All right, welcome back to the next part. Um, we're going to continue by making the feet and the head leaves or whatever they are, and then add the eyes and the mouth, and then we are done for this quick block out. So let's take a look of where we're at. Um, I'm at the feet, and right now both of them were masked, but by pressing control and clicking in empty space, you can fix that. Um, since these are not symmetrical, these legs, um, I turned off symmetry. To turn that off, you press X at any time. To make the feet, we're going to go back and use that IMM brush again. So it's B and then I, and then make sure you're selecting the 3D Character Workshop brush and the appendage. So um, for this, I do want to turn on symmetry, at least for the first foot. So press X and get symmetry back. You know that it's back when you see both of the red icons. Um, but you can see that it's definitely not a symmetrical kind of situation, at least not for me. You are welcome to have yours symmetrical. And I basically want to rotate and then squish these in one direction, so that red direction and scale them and then just rotate and position them. So I'm speeding this um, up quite a bit. I'm a little on the slow side when it comes to move, scale, and rotate. Since you're going to want to move all of these toes individually, you're gonna have to mask off one toe while you're working on the other, or you can use polygroups. The other really important thing I want to show you right now is if you hold down control while dragging using the move tool or this move gizmo, you actually duplicate that object and it's super handy in how I make these three toes right here. So I'm going to keep using that technique to make the toes on the other side. Um, here I'm trying to just move one toe at a time and I masked off the other toes, but now watch what happens. So when I turn on um, polygroups, you can see that they're all one group. So to mask off the toes correctly is really difficult. A better way of going about this is to go to the polygroups menu and auto group them. And that makes each of the toes its own polygroup. And now when I use the move tool, if I press control and shift and click on a toe, it automatically masks all of the other toes and lets me move just this one toe. So this is the power of polygroups and why we should use them. Okay, from here I can um, turn back on my layers and just move and adjust each of the individual toes. Now note that pressing control and shift when clicking on one of the toes um, will activate it, but if it has been already masked in a previous mode, um, it will keep that mask, so you're gonna have to unmask it. So now I'm adjusting the legs, but since those two legs are all on one polygroup, I have to mask off one of them before I can um, adjust the other one. So remember mask, you'd use control and then click and drag around the object if you have the mask lasso on. Okay, so now um, I'm just positioning these toes. I'm going to control shift and click on just the one um, toe that I want to move. And now I'm going to press control and click and drag on the move tool. And that duplicates just that one toe. I'm going to do this again after scaling and positioning this particular toe. So control, click, and drag on one of the move parts and you get another part of the toe. Now I'm going to um, auto group these. So I'm gonna go back down to polygroups and select auto group right there. So auto group will enable me to um, make each of the toes their own group. 
You could also use um, group masked or um, group unmasked, but sometimes just auto group is good enough. And these toes are all unique, so that's fine. Now we're going to repeat the same process at the top of the head. Before we do that, we're going to adjust the top of the head because it seems to be sloping forward so you can see the front of the head. So I'm gonna use my mask lasso brush to kind of mask off the front of the head and then use my move brush to move the back of the head up. So I used control and click and drag with the mask lasso tool. Using the mask kind of made it a little wonky, like there is some um, distortion going on. So what I decided to do instead was just use the move tool and then a brush called H polish. H polish is great because it creates kind of a nice flat plane. And if you use it with a big enough brush, then it'll have that nice flat effect. So once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go to my IMM 3D Character Workshop brush, select the appendage, and start making the first appendage. I'm going to use a move brush, a little smaller this time, and with symmetry turned on to try and, actually I turned off symmetry, um, to try and move these petal pieces around. I also flattened out the petal using um, the one direction scale tool. So now remember once I've made one petal, it is on the same layer right now as the body is. You can see the body is masked out. So I need to go to split. Oh, I turn on dynamic subdivisions and then split unmasked points. And what that does is makes the petal its own layer, and then I can create more petals on this layer. Um, so this is the first time I use Zebra Mesher. You don't have to. Um, what Zebra Mesher does is remeshes this object so that it has less, um, less geometry on it or less faces. It makes it a little smoother in general, um, but you can actually skip this part because that's kind of an advanced step that we will work on later. So I held down control while I was clicking and dragging using the move tool. And so that duplicated these pieces. And so now um, it takes me quite a while to position these individual petals the right way. So I'm gonna speed this up quite a bit, but it's exactly the same as what you did before. You're just going to use your move tool and position each individual petal. Now, because they're all in the same polygroup, um, I want to go back down to polygroups and select auto group. And now I can just individually hold down control and shift and click on the polygroup. Control shift and click in empty space brings back all of the items or all of the polygroups in a particular model. There we go. And so now it's just a matter of move, scale, and rotate until you get eight individual petals that look good. Think of this as practice with polygroups and with duplicating. So while this is heavily sped up, I think it's by three times, um, a few things that I wanna point out is that um, you can move all of the objects in your layer at the same time. Um, Second, you should save if you haven't already. So go to the tool menu and do um, save on the top right and just save this Z tool. So if something happens and you need to go back to it, um, you can and the way you would do that is just load tool. Uh, the next thing that I did do is I duplicated this layer in my subtool menu. So you can either duplicate the individual petals or you can duplicate the entire layer. I actually don't 
know which would have been faster. Um, this was a pretty slow way of doing it as well. You can see that it just took me a lot of time in positioning. I also had some hidden objects um, while I was duplicating the layer and so I had to go back and get rid of those hidden objects. So just be aware when you are um, moving things around that it's really easy to um, have hidden stuff reappear. So it's a good idea to try and be as clean as possible with your um, geometry and with your layers. So you can see these are some of the extra hidden pieces. So I split to parts as well and deleted any um, any layers that had the pieces that I didn't need. So that's definitely one way you can delete things. You can also delete hidden parts. Um, I tend not to do that as much just because deleting a hidden part um, you never know what you actually hid, like perhaps you had some polygroups going on and um, you delete too much. I'm going to slow this down just so I can show you how to save your Z tools. So you're going to go to your tool menu, save as, and you'll see that this is a Z tool. So make sure you do that. And if you need to um, start a new uh, file and load that Z tool, you do that from that same menu. And just to demonstrate, that's what I just did was load another Z tool, but you don't need to do that. Okay, so now I'm just going to merge my two layers of um, feathers together. Um, if you created them all in one layer, you don't need to do that step. And once that's done, I've decided I might as well save again. Okay, so now I want to work on the face and the mouth. Um, I'm going to press Z to turn on spotlight again and select this little orange circle and just kind of move my thing into place so I can kind of see where about the mouth should go. It looks like it goes about here. So let's take note of that. It's kind of right right there. And press Z again to turn it off. So the thing with this body, and I'm on this layer, is that it doesn't have very much geometry. So if I use a clip curve, so B, C, and then let's say a clip circle, or actually let's try a clip rectangle press Control and Shift and then click to use it. So if I press Control Shift and then click and drag, actually if I hold down Alt as well, that means it's doing the opposite and it will delete this area and keep the rest. So then I toggle these off. But the problem with this is that I don't have very much geometry here, so it's not going to be able to make a sharp Corner. So I'm going to use my undo timeline and I'm going to add more geometry to this. So this is where our subdivision layers come in. So I'm going to go to the tool menu, geometry, and divide. Now it doesn't look like it did very much. You get kind of some hazing here. If I delete lower, you can see instantly that I have more geometry. Looks like I have multiple objects on top of each other though, which is a little concerning. If I do have multiple layers of geometry on top of each other, I'm gonna delete lower first. And then what I can do is go to Subtool, Split, and Split to Parts. This is not undoable, so I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna do a save really quick. Sorry, this is some problem solving, um, but it's something that may happen to you. Just cause it's so easy to hold down control and click sometimes. So split to parts, hit okay, and it's not. Okay, so that's fine. 
Um, it must just be my eyes or the way it's looking. So this is looking pretty good for geometry, but I do kind of want a nice sharp indent for that mouth. So what I'm going to do is go to geometry and divide one more time and delete lower. So now this is a pretty darn dense mesh and should be able to handle anything that I put to it. I'm going to use the clip circle, which will cut away anything that is not in the circle. If I press Alt while doing the clip circle, it will keep everything else and just remove the part of the circle. So that's what I'm gonna do here. If you're using the toggle keys, remember to turn them off. Okay, so the last thing to do is to add the eyes. And we're going to use one more, and actually I need to do the hands, but I'll fast forward through those. Um, to add the eyes, what we're going to do is use the extract button. The extract button takes any masked area and allows you to duplicate those faces and extrude them at the same time. So it creates extra geometry in the exact same place as a place that's been masked. So I'm gonna zoom in. Uh, remember, you can use your Alt, click and drag. You can also use this Zoom 3D key. And we're gonna need to get a little close because we want to be able to get close enough to mask. So click and drag, there we go. Okay, and as far as the eyes, I'm gonna use just a standard circle for now and then adjust them later. So I'm gonna go into my brush, hit the letter M to find my mask and look for mask circle and click it. Hold down control, okay. Um, these eyes are actually not symmetrical, so I am not going to have them with symmetry and I'm just gonna hold down control and click and drag. And then control and click and drag. Mm, not a big fan of those two. Let's do it again. Control, click and drag. That's better. Control, click and drag. And it's okay if they're a little wonky. What we're going to do now is look at our different masking options. So we haven't really been through these, but basically under our tool menu and masking, we have a bunch of different options. So you can inverse your mask, clear it, don't do that. You can mask everything. And then these are really interesting. You can blur your mask, which we don't wanna do. You can sharpen your mask. You can grow your mask and shrink your mask. So let's go back. Sharpen mask is kind of what we want, but I'm gonna try one grow and then one sharpen and see how that immediately gave me more of a round appearance. So I'm gonna try this one more time with the sharpen. There we go. And you can click this a few times until you get kind of some sharper geometry here. You can even shrink, nope, don't do that. Okay, but this is pretty good. So now um, that I have these points kind of laid out with my mask, and there's a bunch of different options for masking. Um, you can mask by feature, um, mask by ambient occlusion. There's a bunch of different options by color. Um, but for right now, we just want that sharpen mask and grow mask and shrink if it works for you. Okay. Now we're going to go back up to our sub tool, sub menu. I'm going to hide this split. And see how under sub tool at the very bottom is the extract option. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to click extract. Bam. Now we have new geometry. Uh oh, and it disappeared when I clicked. So I'm going to hit extract again. I am going to notice that when I masked, I also masked the back side of my object. Um, so I'm gonna fix that before I actually extract. So 
The way to fix that is by clicking anywhere. Um, when you're extracting, you have to hit the accept button for it to become real. So I'm just gonna click and that's gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna move around to the back side of my mask and hold down Control and Alt. Remember that does the opposite. And I'm just gonna unmask this back surface here, Control and Alt. Oops. Sorry, remember when you use these toggles to toggle them off and I'm gonna do that a lot. Okay. So we're back here with our masked objects. They've been sharpened and now we're gonna hit extract. And actually that's pretty good. That's good to work with. So I'm gonna hit accept. And now I have two new objects on their own layer and they have a bunch of polygroups on them. So that's perfect. If I hit control and click and drag, I can unmask them. Now I can go about um, scaling these and using my move brush. So actually I already have the move brush selected. So I'm just gonna scale up in size and just kind of make them a tiny bit smaller because they are a little bit on the big side. There we go. But you can see how easy this extract button is. And part of the reason I wanted to show it to you this early is because this is how we'll make clothing. So what's great about it is that you can make another layer extruded out and you have like a shirt or a, a scarf. And that is the essence of the clothing. Now we're basically done. I'm going to rename this layer um, and call it eyes. I'm also going to fix the scaling of the eyes and individually scale them. So to do that, I want to um, split to parts so that I can scale each individual eye. Now I was having some issues and I'm leaving this part in my video just because you'll see what to do if this happens to you. Um, but basically when I was trying to scale and move this into position so I could scale the eye, it was going all way out of frame. So you can hit F, which is great. Um, but I think it had to do more with that gizmo is actually kind of hidden it somewhere off frame, which is super annoying. Um, one way if this happens to you is click on your scale tool and then click on that gizmo button and it will bring up the transpose line and the transpose line um, we'll get into later. But it works similarly to the gizmo. It's just that you can click on any surface and it will bring, um, kind of center the gizmo on that surface in addition to a whole bunch of other really fantastic things. Um, but it's less intuitive since we've been working with Maya. Okay, so that's enough for this. I will show one more video on how to add paint, but that is optional for this character. And um, I'm sorry these videos were so long. Thank you.